Tourism, Japan Tourism Agency in Japan, sir. Honorable Yuroko Kiyoki, the Governor of Tokyo, Japan. Honorable Hiromi Tagawa, Chairman of Japan Association of Travel Agents and Chairman of Tourism Expo Japan Steering Committee. Tagawa-san, thank you dearly for welcoming us into your home and taking such good care of us. Honorable Shigeto Kubo, the President of Japan Travel and Tourism Association. Honorable Satoshi Sino, the President of Japan National Tourism Organization. Your Excellency, Mr. Zura Pololishkashvili, the Secretary General of the UNWTO. Honorable Ministers and Secretaries of Tourism, the lovely Gloria Guevara, the President and CEO of the WTTC. Dr. Mario Hardy, the CEO of PATA. Mr. Shannon Stoll, the CEO of HTTA. Honorable Heads of Delegations, ladies and gentlemen from across Japan and the tourism world, Dear friends, all protocols observed. Thank you very much for being with us and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the second ministerial round table being held at the Japan Expo for Tourism here in beautiful Tokyo. And I must say a warm round of applause to our lovely organizers for as I said earlier, we're getting closer to a round table when we have a round table dialogue. It is my great pleasure. It is my great pleasure and honor to be your MC for today. I'm going to carry you through the next two hours of discussion with an arrangement of some exceptional, exceptional leaders from across the tourism world who are working together as a single community. Ladies and gentlemen, shifting time and sentiment a little bit, we live in a time where our world is struggling to come together. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the UN globally, so ultimately my boss's boss, made a comment last year when he joined the UN and he was opening up the General Assembly in September. And he made a lovely statement of saying, we are a world in pieces, we need to be a world in peace. As we've seen over the past decade, not only in terms of numbers, but in terms of ideological impact, travel and tourism is shaping our shared world. A powerful force for global development, for unity, for stability, for peace, for creating opportunity, for building bridges at a time when we need to be bringing down walls. Through travel and tourism, people worldwide 
are opening their minds, they're opening up their hearts to the concept of difference. And in today's day and age, there could be no, nothing more precious and more beautiful in terms of feeling, I see you and I respect you. That is why we are a global vehicle for peace. Strong, sustainable growth of tourism does not happen by default. It requires we work together to find a way to absolutely ensure that we are a force for good, economically, socially, culturally, and environmentally. Central to Tourism Expo Japan, one of the world's youngest, yet as was said earlier by my Secretary General, one of the most important travel and tourism events in the world, is that it brings together 200,000 visitors from over 130 countries and regions. This is the UNWTO TEJ Ministerial Roundtable, which is going to be seen an interactive facilitated dialogue to really push the agenda on how do we ensure that we, through tourism, are bringing our world closer together. As always, the Ministerial Roundtable will seek to provide all present, on stage and in the audience, with a clear, confident and workable framework to mobilize our travel and tourism priorities and partnerships, thereby embedding sustainable tourism growth for tomorrow. Our world needs tourism. And as you will see from the rich contributions of all of our ministerial roundtable participants, our world needs these leaders at this time to help us move global tourism forward as a collective force for good. The Global Tourism Forum consists of two parts. Firstly, I'm going to invite my lovely Secretary General to have a brief word of welcome to everyone present, and then we get down to the work. And we're going to have a debate for just over an hour and 50 minutes, and really work through how do we ensure that we are building tourism through communities, not just through policies. How are we making this matter and lifting the baseline so that our industry has a role to play directly in uh, achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I am delighted to welcome to our podium the UNWTO Secretary General, Polo Likashvili san Please, sir. Uh, this morning we talked a lot about innovation and I think today's our meeting is also innovative initiative and I want to thank to all organ organizers and especially Anita San to, to organize such a different format. Uh, again, this is for us first time when, when we are meeting in this kind of uh, uh, format and uh, it's my privilege. Uh, I will, will be very honest, it's difficult to have in the same room such um, big intellectual uh, resources and assets. And I want to thank you all ministers, all participants. We have Gloria here, representative of the world private sector, Mario Vardi. Well, I don't want to miss somebody, but again, many thanks to all ministers and all participants to do with us. Uh, as Anita San gave us very clear uh, instruction how we will like this upcoming two hours, uh, I'm ready to work. For me, it's very interesting to hear from you such experience, such diverse, regional diverse uh, participants. What are the challenges? What are the problematic issues? Especially, this is the role of our organization to put nice showcases and to interchange and to share experiences between and among our member states. I'm very thankful to be with you. Again, it's very interesting, very challenging uh, today's meeting. Let's be active. Let's put all our forces and ideas uh, in this room and I'm sure that then we have, we'll have concrete uh, results, concrete uh, productive ideas and uh, uh, that's why we are here. We have, you know, every uh, six months executive council, this is the same format I proposed when I entered the office, to discuss, to talk, to, to be active and to give our, uh, and to, to give our uh, ideas to all of us. Thank you very much to participate in this very interesting meeting for all of us. I'm sure this will be a very fruitful and successful meeting. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I want to use this uh, opportunity, I apologize. We have here uh, uh, Honorable uh, Minister from Iceland and uh, from Vice Minister from Latvia. Unfortunately, they are not our member states. They are they are very close to us, and please use these days to convince them to become our member states. Thank you.
Arigato gozaimashu. And I must say, I'm sure everyone heard the subtle undertone of yet as the Secretary General introduced our two new people. Ladies and gentlemen, we now shift to the actual discussions itself. The Ministerial Roundtable has been designed to provide insights and foster a deeper understanding and engagement around the critical matter of how do we actually manage sustainable tourism for community development. So not just for development, but how do we ensure that we're doing this as a community for the sake of our communities back home. We are delighted and grateful to have a record number of 19 VIP ministers and secretaries and top executives from international organizations joining us here today. Please join, let him welcome with me. We're going to have everyone called out in alphabetical order, so we're being very UN democratic about this. But please allow me to welcome each of you country by country, starting with the Kingdom of Bhutan. Please welcome Ms. Sh Ms. Shimi Pem, the Director of the Tourism Council of Bhutan. We also have the very brave and speaking excellent English, Dr. Tom Khun, the Minister of Tourism of the Kingdom of Cambodia, sir. Thank you. We have a lovely minister present who is on clearly the Secretary General's wish list in terms of our membership in the future. The Mistardis Colbrun, break your board, Gail Capdoff Tier. And I hope I got that right. I'm sorry. Tamaki-san, <laughs> Commissioner of Japan Tourism Agency here at home in Japan. Sir. <laughs> Mr. Eric Iglitis, the State Secretary of Economics from the Republic of Latvia. Sir, thank you for joining us. Ketapki, the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture of Malaysia. Sir, thank you for joining us. Our dear, dear friend, the Secretary of Tourism of United Mexican States, Mr. Enrique Alamadrid Cordero. Sir. From Mongolia, we have joining us the Minister of Environment and Tourism, Mr. Tserbitat Namstrai. Sir. Union Minister of Hotels and Tourism, Mr. On Wang. <laughs> Switching now to the Philippines at this side of the table, we have joining us Ms. Bernadette Romolo Poyat, the Secretary of Tourism for the Republic of the Philippines. <laughs> Still staying within the region, we have Mr. Ranjit Aluahar, the State Minister of Tourism Development and Christian Religious Affairs of the lovely Sri Lanka. <laughs> We have joining us from Sudan, Dr. Gordon, Dr. Graham Abd Al Ghadir Damin, the Under Secretary of Tourism, Antiquities, and Wildlife. Sir, thank you. <laughs> Our very, very dear friend from the Minister of Tourism, Sports, and uh, the Kingdom of Thailand, Mr. Wirasak Kausalat. Sir, welcome. And joining us from international tourism organizations, we all know our dear Secretary General. Slip that in. We also have Mr. Shannon Stoll, the CEO of the Adventure Travel Trade Association, coming from the U.S. Our Asian brother, Dr. Mario Hardy, CEO of PATA, Pacific Asian Travel Association. The lovely Gloria Guevara Monzo, President and CEO of the WTTC and champion of the private sector, partnering with the public sector. Joining us as well, Ms. Hiroko Kiyoke, the Governor of Tokyo, Japan. And we have my brother from the UNWTO, Mr. Zhu, our Executive Director, please. I'm now going to retire this microphone. We're going to switch over to. Are we live? We're live. Brilliant. We're now going to go into the actual theory of how we're going to run this. And as was described to people inside, we're going to do it as a conversation. And we're going to have a conversation where we really can build on insights and learnings and wisdom that is gathered here today. We want to make sure that everyone's voice is heard. So I will manage the air traffic control as a tourism person. But we're going to make sure that everyone gets a chance to speak. Now there was a catch, because our brilliant people that are here were all given a brief 
that they needed to speak for three minutes each. However, as I'm hoping we negotiated in the room next door, in giving their brief statements, I'm going to beg everyone to be brief so that we can actually take the key points out of it and have a conversation itself. I will do the honors of facilitating the conversation, and again, as we said, it's about managing sustainable tourism for development. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about managing tourism for sustainable tourism development in communities, we're looking at it at so many levels. Last year, we had the blessing of having the International Year of Sustainable Tourism for Development celebrated across the entire UN system. For one whole year, every single UN agency and country across the world recognized the value of tourism. But if we're really going to shift the needle now and say, how do we make this work for communities, we need to look at so many different levels. We need to look at it from the point of view of job creation, investment attraction, community participation, experience diversification and distribution, policy formulation, and poverty alleviation. So how do we actually do this? And I'm going to deviate from my script slightly, because how many people in the room here were with us last year at the first ministerial roundtable? How many were here last year? There's one cautious hand who was here last year, but didn't actually make it to the ministerial. Because as many of you will remember, when we came together last year, the actual day that our lovely State Secretary of Tourism from Mexico arrived to be with us, the earth shook in Mexico, and there was an earthquake, and it was devastating. He very briefly and very classily had some meetings with our lovely hosts, and he went straight back to the airport. And his stunning mini-me took over and took to the stage. And we paused for a moment. Sorry, I'm just giving you a new title. So, he pa we paused for a moment to say a little prayer for the people of Mexico. And it showed the fact that we as a community of people, we celebrate together, but we also grieve together. If you think of where we are right now, it's quite devastating to see. If you look across the world, Japan suffering recently from Mother Nature, Hong Kong, China, Macau, the Philippines, the US, nowhere in the world is immune from the anger of Mother Nature, which means every single place in the world needs to have a mechanism in place to not just protect us from when she has these temper tantrums, but help us build again and build back stronger for when she moves on. And we see that happening around the world. What better than tourism to mobilize that? But as we all know, so often when places are in trouble, people stay away. So the question is, how do we work together to truly bring tourism in as a way of engineering countries to get back on their feet again. But not just back on their feet again in terms of the economies, to get their spirits back on their feet again and make them feel stronger. If we look at Thailand recently, the world celebrated as we saw those young boys be lifted by the world to bring them back to their families in Chiang Mai. It was remarkable. Our world no longer has borders. And it's not just about media, whether it's social media or unsocial media. We care. And our industry is the industry that allows people to care in a way that connects them through their difference to find a common place apart. So how do we actually then bring that to life? So to start our conversation, I'm going to be starting it initially with going around the table and ask, how do we, as a country, work together to be able to create sustainable tourism development for community upliftment. And I'm very blessed to be able to start with our lovely Secretary of Tourism of the Philippines, a country that Mother Nature spends a lot of time in, in good days and bad, but a country that is absolutely a definition of resilience. Madam, please. Distinguished guests, organizers, good afternoon, everyone. Konnichiwa. It is a pleasure to be part of the second ministerial roundtable in collaboration with the UNWTO Tourism Expo Japan 2018. It is an honor to give voice to the sentiments of the Philippine tourism industry in this affair. Philippine tourism is a booming industry. It is growing so quickly 
that we are more than five years ahead of our tourism targets. Mm -hmm. In 2017, the tourism industry accounted for 12.2% of our country's GDP, a figure which exceeds the 10% share of GDP we targeted for 2022. In the same year, we also recorded 96.7 million domestic tourist arrivals, exceeding 86.2 million target we set for 2022. Moreover, we also recorded an 11.3% increase in terms of visitor arrivals. We are, of course, proud about the growth of Philippine tourism. However, we are also concerned that this growth might not last if we lose the attractions that brought so many visitors to our land. After all, there is a paradox that exists in tourism. The more popular our destinations get, the greater is the impact on their natural and cultural endowments, which are the very resources that need to be safeguarded for sustained competitiveness. This concern is the reason for our country's commitment to sustainable tourism. The Tourism Act of 2009 mandates us to promote a tourism industry that is ecologically sustainable, responsible, participative, culturally sensitive, economically viable, and ethically and socially equitable for local communities. President Rodrigo Duterte himself, in the State of, Nation, the, State of the Nation address before Congress, affirmed, affirmed sustainable tourism as a policy of the entire Philippine government. The Philippines' radical decision to give Boracay, one of the crown jewels in the Philippine tourism, a six-month beauty rest, demonstrates our government's strong resolve and determination to abide by the principles of sustainable tourism. Our own Department of Tourism, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, and the Department of Interior and Local Government are working closely together to rehabilitate the island of Boracay from the damage caused by the neglect of years past and to protect what we have upon its reopening to the world this October. I believe that this heralds a renaissance for Philippine tourism. We are conscious of the fact that there are people whose livelihood and its well-being depend on the policies we set. The Philippine tourism industry employed 5.3 million Filipinos in 2017, representing 13.1% of total employment in the country. That's 5.3 million careers, families, and dreams that our department is responsible for. We must balance their interests with the equally important interests of the environment, the host community, and the sustainability of the industry. Perhaps we will not grow as fast as we can, but we will ensure that for future generations, those who will walk on the beaches of Boracay and other natural attractions in the country will enjoy the same pristine sands and clear waters that pioneer tourists in these places experience. After all, tourism is not just about the workers and the sites, it is also about the tourists who spend their hard-earned money for the experience of a lifetime. We want their interests to be considered too, for they certainly contribute to the success or failure of our industry. In weaving these interests together, our department is now implementing the National Tourism Development Plan that seeks to promote the participation of micro, small, and medium enterprises in the booming tourism industry promote gender sensitivity among all tourism officers of local governments, diversify the offerings of the Philippines to the travelers of the world, preserve the environment, and promote climate change adaptation, and implement risks and climate management programs. The aim of these efforts is to develop a globally competitive, environmentally, sustainably, and social responsible tourism industry that promotes inclusive growth through employment generation and equitable distribution, distribution of income, thereby contributing to building a foundation for a high trust society. Boracay is our best case. Our experience in Boracay is a case study 
that shows how important sustainability is for community development in the real world. It has taught us many thing, things. Lessons learned here are an invaluable chapter of our story of building a culture of sustainable tourism in the Philippines. We want our people and our tourists to have the sense of responsible tourism that the Japanese have. The sight of Japanese fans cleaning up after themselves in your game against Colombia in the World Cup is an inspiration in the entire world. It is really more fun in the Philippines right now, and we intend to keep it that way for many years to come. As we continue on with our discussions, I hope that we can learn more about the strategies and approaches other countries have adopted. In this free exchange of ideas, we can all work on improving our country's tourism programs and the global tourism experience. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Secretary of Tourism intervention, her intervention right up front it was perfectly positioned because you went from the theory to the practice, but from the practice point of view, when it goes those. And to your point, you said that the Philippines was a test case. When you put Boralkai in that six month hold, it sent a message around to the world of, from a tourism perspective, did we really do that? And from a local perspective, did we really allow that? And that's where your test, your test case has hopefully given the world a warning sign of just how important it is to pause, to prevent, and then to promote in a long-term way that is sustainable for all. If we move from the Philippines now to Latvia, please, can you please share with us what is it that you can give priority to in your policies to ensure that there really is sustainable development for communities? Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, dear moderator, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, it's really a big honor to be here and uh, to listen and, and share experiences in such a such prominent uh, circumstance. I represent a small country, uh, Latvia, which is uh, part of the Nordic Eastern uh, Europe. And the overall goal of the Latvian tourism policy is to ensure the sustainable growth of the tourism sector. So these two things have to go together hand in hand, sustainability and the growth. And uh, at the same time, we have to, being a small market, we have to address the issue of becoming more, more uh, known and uh, to become more competitive in the export markets. So uh, what we have done in order to achieve that, we have uh, created the the guidelines for the tourism development for 2014 to 20, and this has been the the conceptual framework for the development of the industry. And uh, here we outline the focus areas uh, with uh, high tourism export potential and support for profitable tourism entrepreneurship, taking environmental issues into into account as well. The main things which uh, guidelines have helped us to address, uh, first of all, the high, season, uh, high seasonality, because we are a northern country, so uh, naturally in summer we get more tourists, we had to invent something more for winter. We are not a ski resort of any kind, but uh, the historical fact that Latvia is the, the birthplace of the uh, traditional Christmas tree and the product development around this fact has helped us a lot in that respect. And uh, also we have to address uh, the issues around the visible tourist footprints and tourism concentrated areas which was outlined by the previous speaker. So uh, we don't get so massive tourist inflow yet at, at the moment, but we have to make sure that we do the preventive activities in order to, uh, to avoid the pitfalls of the uh, countries who have uh, uh, met, met this issue. The uh, additional things what we are trying to, to address with these guidelines is the restless gradual improvement in the tourism product quality. We cannot be satisfied with the existing level of the uh, tourism products and uh, we have to make sure that the awareness of of uh, Latvia and Baltic states as the, uh, as the destination is sustainable and uh, the uh, 
we are not subject to, to matter of mood changes in the tourism industry. So uh, the main things uh, how we are doing this uh, is we are addressing uh, first of all our entrepreneurs and we are making sure that uh, they get the support and uh, they create the export oriented high quality products. And the other thing of course is uh, we make sure that businesses invest in, envir in, in envir environmentally friendly practices because um, ecologically pure environment is one of the tourists' uh, greatest assets and it's a fundamental core to the long-term growth. In that respect, we have very successful cooperation with the Rural Tourism Association in Latvia, which is also present here for the Expo. And uh, they, their success really is manifesting that, that we are on the right course with this. And finally, I also need to mention that, uh, as also was mentioned by the previous speaker, working directly with tourists, with, with our customers, uh, rising their awareness about the environmental issues, about the uh, necessity to preserve the, uh, the sites where they visit, is also the, the one of the focal, focal parts of, of our guidelines. So that would be a summary. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And I must say that um, I'm enjoying the fact that you said very much keep the main thing the main thing. And it really is about making choices. And what's interesting about what's being shared is that those choices of who is going to come to visit, when are they coming to visit, with whom do we partner, how do we invest, takes a lot of courage. Because very often people can feel that we're limiting tourism when actually we're giving it the foundations to truly be sustainable because we're managing it proactively. We're going to shift now to two countries who, even before we started talking about sustainable tourism, were putting practices in place where they were overtly making choices and had the courage to stand up and say, this is the role that tourism has to play in our policies and in our country, and these are the tourists we want to help us keep our country sustainable. Madam, you know I'm going to you next. From Bhutan, please. Uh, thank you, Anita, uh, Your Excellencies and distinguished guests. Um, I think uh, Bhutan's tourism experience uh, would not be complete um, if I did not take you back a little bit in time, specifically uh, 1974 when a 17-year-old boy was crowned king uh, who became the fourth king of Bhutan and who set forth a development policy that was centered around people um, and uh, with sustainability at its core, as Anita mentioned, uh, I think long before the SDGs uh, came into existence. And uh, that development path uh, ensured or strived to uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, pursue economic development, but alongside uh, also the cultural preservation, environment uh, conversation, uh, conservation uh, through good governance, um, all being done so that we can leave a better future for our children, uh, for the future citizens. And therefore, uh, tourism definitely uh, uh, draws its inspiration from this development philosophy which now uh, is known all over the world as cross-national happiness. So our tourism policy of uh, high value, low impact draws inspiration from this uh, policy and uh, we are very mindful that uh, tourism is developed in a cautious manner without negative impacts uh, on uh, whether it's our culture, our nature, or, or our people. So uh, we are mindful that uh, the needs of the present uh, are fulfilled, but we leave uh, better opportunities, opportunities, enhanced opportunities uh, for the future. So having said that, our uh, tourism has four characteristics, so that is of being responsible 
uh, not only as a host, but uh, we ask that our guests also be as responsible. We try to be as authentic um, in our offerings, uh, whether it's our festivals or our way of life, uh, it is for our people. Then, of course, uh, we also strive for quality of service uh, because we would like our, our uh, guests to be our ambassadors. And I guess to be ambassadors, they have to be happy, and uh, to be happy, they have to have been served well. And then the last is we follow a, a very unique system of tourism. I don't think it's uh, followed anywhere else in the world. Um, we uh, there is a minimum uh, all paid daily package rate that is charged uh, to the tourist to the visitor, and within that is what we call a sustainable development fee uh, which the government uses which helps the government to ensure that uh, free education is given to its uh, citizens uh, free health care is also given as well as in terms of uh, building better infrastructure uh, in the country um, having said that, of course, we do have our challenges of spreading the benefits of tourism equally and uh, our strategies as we go forth will be to involve um, uh, more participation of the communities uh, in uh, tourism development. Um, also, uh, the, uh, uh, the Constitution of Bhutan uh, demands that 60% of uh, the country remain under forest cover for all times. At the moment, we have something like 72%, more than 72% under forest cover, 50% uh, protected areas. Bhutan is also, at the moment, is carbon uh, negative, which means we absorb more carbon dioxide than we emit. And we have made a pledge that uh, we will remain carbon neutral at all times. And therefore, to be uh, able to do this, uh, because many of our communities live in those parks, we also need to strategize, and tourism is, um, is a big potential for bringing these people, bringing our communities living in these parks on board uh, to be development partners uh, in the conservation of our environment. So a lot of challenges, but also a lot of opportunities uh, for Bhutan. <laughs> One thing I must say that's lovely about listening to Madam talk about Bhutan is that you have a true 360 degree model. Because if you look at destinations around the world that have been studied by the WTTC, by the UNWTO struggling with over tourism, the local pushback is that you're costing us happiness for the sake of the happiness of the tourists. But your beautiful kingdom has actually said, no, 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 no gross national happiness means the local happiness and the tourism happiness. And you started that a long time ago, which is quite unique, because similarly, our dear friend from Malaysia, the Honorable Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, you, sir, are a pioneer when it comes to community development through sustainable tourism. Because your beautiful country, sir, was the first one to develop and make into a policy homestays. Please, can you share a little bit about how that came to life and how you kept that alive to become of how your country actually continues to grow through tourism? Please. Um, thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. Um, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I wish to express my sincere appreciation and congratulations to Japan Association of Travel Agents, um, JATA, for organizing the second ministerial round table in collaboration with um, World Tourism Organization. I would like also to thank um, JATA for inviting me to participate in this forum. Social inclusion in the tourism development is essential. And we need to strike a good balance between the maximum 
maximization of economic returns and social um, economic returns and social returns. Therefore, local involvement enhance enhancement of local capabilities, sense of belonging and ownership, economic empowerment and employment opportunities are essential ingredients for developing and managing tourism in a sus sustainable manner to cater the social economic needs of local communities. In Malaysia, we have formulated the um, National Ecotourism Plan 2016-2025. I'll be coming to that, um, what you were asking me just now. I will finish this one for a little while. Yeah. A little while. Yeah. Um, as part of the sustainable tourism development and uphold the principle that the tourism protects, um, preserves and conserves mother nature, culture and heritage. This plan embodies the spirit of the theme of lifting communities, um, opportunities and economics. These themes focuses on the outputs, outcomes and benefits of ecotourism, which is the left hand side of the equation. Um, more often, more importantly, the right hand side variables in, involving the inputs of responsible tourism and sustainable development policy and practice are accorded due priority to the plan. Now, let me talking on this um, homestay.